Welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. I'm Kevin Devani, the Total Connector. Really excited and thrilled to have Marcel Yunus for the first time on with together with uh, Hesme Cook, whom you already know uh, from my earlier shows. Um, we're going to talk about Lebanon, about you know the whole currency crisis, uh, economical crisis. I mean, it's global anyway, but uh, you know it's a very special case, Lebanon. Actually, it's not that special because things are just repeating itself. You know, I mean, if we just could learn out of history, with its you know monetary debasement, devaluation, uh, you know, currency uh, uh, crisis. Um, what have you, you know, uh, bail in such as, you know, happened like, uh, uh, some years ago in Cyprus. Um, so yeah. And of course, you know, uh, what would be a podcast show, a Bitcoin podcast show without talking about Bitcoin. And I want to know about, you know, I want to know the situation in, in Lebanon, uh, you know, how they're doing with, 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 with Bitcoin Do most people, you know, how many people do understand the fundamental monetary properties? Do they, you know, are the hodlers or not? You know, can we transition to a to a circular economy at least internally, and then sort of you know build up clusters of circular economies? Anyway, without further ado, I'm really excited to have Asma Cook and Marcel Yunus on my show, and hope you're going to love it. Let me know your questions, your comments afterwards, and uh, make sure you uh, yeah make sure you follow me it retweet it reshare it like it whatever you do thank you so much for your support for listening without further ado this is my interview my talk with Marcel Yunus and Hasma Cook thank you bye hey welcome to my show Marcel Yunus and Hasma Cook my special guest today how are you guys doing Hi. welcome <laughs> great thank you thanks so much for uh, taking your time glad to be here yeah so listen guys um I've been following a little bit you know the whole I don't know what you would call it, currency crisis or uh, a fiat monetary regime in, in Lebanon. Um, um, Marcel, you are the, f um, I mean, I've had has McCook on for uh, many times on my show, but could you let's give you a brief introduction, like your background a little bit and, you know, your, your, your access to Bitcoin sort of. Sure. Uh, first of all, I'm a pharmacist by profession. All right. I'm not an economist. I'm um, just a person who discovered Bitcoin back in 2017. And back then I was a moon boy, like overnight, I'm going to be rich and, um, you know, live a happy life, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and Bitcoin was just a vehicle for me to start buying shit coins. Like, I think it goes like every single person when it starts with, with crypto, that's how it goes. But somewhere around, I think mid 2018, um, I read, uh, Safin Dean's book, which is the Bitcoin standard. And from then it was just simply a rabbit hole for me, like start reading more and more about policies and economies and how everything is related to, together. Austrian economics, Keynesian and economics, it's just crazy. I've been consuming knowledge ah, like a few hours a day, podcast reading, everything I can consume, I was just doing that. And uh, it's a crazy ride, actually. <laughs> and Safed and Amuz uh, is actually Le Lebanese, right? I mean, uh, has, is he originally a Le from uh, Lebanon? Uh, he's, uh, I believe he's Palestinian. But he's, uh, he's lived uh, in Lebanon and uh, went to university at AUB. That's where me and myself first met. So yeah, uh, freshman, uh, fresh, <laughs> freshman uh, AUB, uh, uh, September 02. So uh, wow. such a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, while, a while back uh, uh, now, but yeah, AUB, uh, holding it down, represent. So, uh, but still, the, 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 the economic misery and uh, general population uh, attitudes, sentiments, and behaviors uh, is uh, relatively consistent in that region, be it Lebanon, Palestine, Syria, Jordan. Uh, it's all literally the same shit. Uh, and uh, I'm but guessing- Lebanon is just catching up right now. Yeah, Lebanon is catching up right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we yeah. had like 22 years delay of that. <laughs> So some things seem to be uh, repeating, you know, like uh, patterns uh, uh, in historically, monetary, economically. Now, what I want to know, what is so special um, about Lebanon in terms of, you know, monetary regime? What is so special about Lebanon? Mm. Do I, do you, what do you think? Do you, want me to, do you want me to take that? All right. Yeah, please. Lebanon, sure, a, please. Lebanon is a is a is a very very special uh, is a very very special case of of really everything. It is uh, uh, there's uh, I believe maybe three to four times as many Lebanese people outside of Lebanon 
huge diaspora. Uh, Beirut as a city, uh, you know, has been continuously inhabited for almost 7,000 years and, and it has never seen a decade of peace. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of, uh, the sky's falling around always consistently. The sky is always falling in Lebanon, but somehow it keeps surviving. It, it, it just, it manages to be okay. We're going to default. The government's going to go bankrupt. Like government's been going bankrupt for 20 years. It's going to be all right. And then things become all right. Whether you know some some magically. some rich <laughs> some rich Lebanese uh, overseas, like you know, decide to, you know chip in some money, uh, do some big investments, call on their connections. Somehow, like it always just seems to come good uh, for Lebanon. So the 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 run of and it's not even good luck. The luck is terrible, but it, it's it's good luck in terms that it's the worst case scenario isn't. Uh, sort of eventuating just that in itself is a stroke of good luck and uh, the Lebanese consider themselves lucky very uh, lucky but, uh, actually we have something called Beirut, Beirut syndrome if I'm not mistaken is that believing everything is fine everything is okay because this is Beirut after all and look and it was until it wasn't right and uh, and Absolutely. it wasn't uh, for the first time ever like everyone knows like you know the Lebanese guy parties hard fun love to work with him, always makes good on his debts, always. Mm -hmm. uh, March 1st, 2020, uh, we couldn't make good on our debt. And uh, I suppose the, the psyche now has completely shifted and uh, the man on the ground can tell us uh, Actually, of the psyche. <laughs> Believe it or not, the people are still believing that everything is okay and this is all a political game. I mean, I think this, the political game that's happening in Lebanon and in the region, of course, probably led us to this situation we are in. But now it's a purely economical, the way I see it. Of course, I could be wrong. However, it's simply like the shortest way, briefly, we are broke. Lebanon is broke. We have, uh, per year, we spend around $17 billion on our imports. And we have, we export around 3.8, roughly 4 billion uh, of exports. So we just run out of money. We have no USD to cover up and to keep the, the peg holding on, on to 1,500 uh, uh, you know, per dollar. It, we just broke, simply as that. For all those years, we just been gathering money from all from outside, from, our, from people living out on, on the outside Lebanon and uh, investors have been interacting with high incentives like 14, 15 uh, percent on, on your interest. I know many people who are living like in Germany and, and outside of Lebanon, we made like say half a million dollar and instead of keeping it in Germany with 0.01% of interest, they just send it to Lebanon because that's very lucrative. Now, why should I, you know, uh, keep it on bank in, in, in Germany, let's say, and just send it to Lebanon, it's my home, home country and be supported. But what was actually happening, it was like a big Ponzi scheme. Do you know what's funny? I don't even think BitConnect offered 14%. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, like uh, the, the, the Lebanese, like uh, the, the, the Lebanese person, it's almost like in their genetic coding, send money back to Lebanon. There's always people back yeah. home in Lebanon, mm -hmm. like you need to send money back to Lebanon. And you, you find a lot of the GDP uh, is remittance, is like straight remittance. So if, if people aren't sending money home, uh, people struggle uh, really bad. And uh, there's a bit of a, a struggle on now uh, in Lebanon, so what's what's the unemployment there now? Like um, I said, forty I mean, percent. The last, by the last this time, point? the last time I checked, officially we're supposed to be around twenty-five, thirty. Uh, unofficially, we were forty yeah, percent uh, before yeah. for before everything was happening going on. But now we have like massive, massive layoffs. So I guess we 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 hit over. 50%. Yeah, I read something about like two hundred fifty thousand lost the jobs. Is it? Is it, could that be correct? That was just from the from the tourism and the restaurant sector. Uh huh. Somewhere I just if pulled I'm up randomly mistaken. some articles here. Uh, I I think I, I saw something. Uh, yeah. Number of two hundred fifty thousand, but you know it doesn't matter. Um. Because so, look to put it in context, Lebanon's a pretty small country, so let's let's give the li listeners even even 10, more 000, context. So so 10, Lebanon's what, square. So so. <laughs> Time. So yeah, Lebanon. It's uh, it's probably about as big as as a as a major Western city geographically. 
uh, with about a, a population of 4 million, of which one and a half million are like refugee Syrians and two and a half million are locals or, or, or some, some ratio, uh, some staggering ratio. So Lebanon's economy is overburdened by every, every single thing Foreign you could worker. possibly imagine. Uh, and and it's, it's not a recent phenomenon. So the Syrians have been in Lebanon now three, four years. So it doesn't, it doesn't recent, take in. Yeah. So it's not even part of like the, the economic calculus. It's now, you know, assumed status quo. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I, I'm quickly reading, you know, as you're scrolling down, ticking time bomb, <laughs> ticking time bomb. Yeah. It's been a ticking time bomb for a very long time and it's, it's finally gone boom. And, but you have to actually go back, if you go back in the history to, to Lebanon, you see that in the back when it was the civil war in 1980s to 1990s, uh, we already had a devaluation of our currency. It was, if I'm not mistaken, the one dollar was around 3.7 Lebanese pound. And till 1995, it reached 3,000. That's basically 1,000 X, no, 100. That's a lot. Almost. <laughs> yeah, a, almost a, oh, almost 1,000 X. Yeah. Wow. That's that's mm -hmm. pretty pretty like heavy. However, the people there back then didn't really feel that feel it. Why? Because everything was grown inside of Lebanon. The wheat, we were self-sustaining, we had no the death we had, we we're pretty much okay. So no matter how much it devalued, we were still more or less self-sufficient. If you move fast forward to 2020, 2019, we have one hundred over one hundred and twenty billion debt, I think. Probably yeah, more. it's it's it's. it's I think the worst in the world. Uh, I was seeing in a in a Telegram group. I think it was in the geopolitics group, uh, Kayvon, about uh, strength of uh, uh, you know fuel left in the tank for you know a list of sixty six emerging uh, economies uh, mm -hmm. to be able to come out the others. Yeah, exactly. We're beating <laughs> Venezuela. That's it. No so way. Might so as well be. Almost there. We're almost beating there. Venezuela. <laughs> So, uh, but, so yeah. Lebanon Iran is, is one of the worst too, right? I mean, it's, I don't know what rank. What, what's Look, Iran rank is, Lebanon? Iran is uh, very difficult to get data on and the, mm -hmm. and the fate of Lebanon, uh, rests very, uh, squarely on the fate of Iran. Really? Uh, I'll explain so, why. So in Lebanon, you have a, uh, economic crisis, but you've also got the, 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 the founding, the founding stone of all the problems is the political crisis, mm -hmm. the political mm -hmm. crisis that just has not been going away for 5,000 years, this goddamn political crisis. <laughs> so they, uh, so civil war went on. A lot of people died, went for a very long time. Everything was destroyed. They cut a deal, uh, where they were divided, you know, uh, basically g how government is structured based on religious roles and to keep every religion happy. Every religion got a character, like the Maronites got a, the president, the Sunni Muslims got the prime minister. So it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But but that's just that's how it is, and that's been the system till now. And the same leaders that cut that deal, the end of the war, the exact same characters now. They're the literally they they are ninety years old, and Still like there. they are the same characters. The ones that have just gotten a little too old, like their sons have taken over, like it's monarchy. Like, <laughs> don't worry about elections or anything like the kid. Uh, so it's, it's that kind of rut. And uh, basically they're all arguing uh, effectively. Their, their time is spent uh, arguing about how to divide up the spoils. Like uh, electricity, who gets like the electricity money, which like, politician and like his uh mafia uh mm -hmm. cement water the cartels we call them the cartels uh, basically <laughs> so like uh you know no one Huge collects corruption. the garbage yes. and yeah. no one collects like the municipal garbage unless like the proper cartel gets the proper mm -hmm. handshake you, you on like the, you know can't... on the garbage contract <laughs> You can't literally get a job or a proper, well, like a good job without uh, talking to one of these people and representatives and that you represent this kind of sect, for example, and this is your spot because we have a spot for you for Shia or for Sunnah or for a Christian. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. It's always been, I mean, since ages at least uh, in, in Lebanon, the corruption is so high. It's just incomprehensible, literally. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's, uh, and it's, 
like uh, the super glue has set in like they're <laughs> they're in until the end so uh we've tried to like go help get help from people uh but because of the political i think there's something like a hundred different political parties in lebanon like there's like nine major ones uh but they all now have started to build like foreign ties so mm -hmm. you've got some that are like saudi arabia aligned you've got hezbollah that's iran uh, aligned mm -hmm. and like hezbollah has its own army and does conduct inside foreign policy Lebanon. inside and out so they they like they're mm -hmm. active they're active in syria they pop up in the news all the time in like american news like today like mm -hmm. us had a shootout with uh, hezbollah backed fighters and so and so backed fighters they have so their own a, news channel even so so in lebanon you have a government that doesn't have monopoly over like use of force uh, it's all a disaster the french love us and want to help us uh, but they've said listen you change your government and uh, we'll help you out whatever you need mm -hmm. but I, Marcel, I think they made that i think they made yeah. that offer three years ago Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marcel, can I ask you something? So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, uh, sure. before I forget that question. I mean, you are you live in Lebanon. Do you have the the feeling that you know, like in Iran, like that's what I heard is that the group of the merchants, the bazaar people, like have a huge impact, mm -hmm. a huge influence on the whatever political process or. But you know, when it comes to economics, when it comes to like uh, uh, monetary value or monetary debasement, uh, isn't that like? really dangerous even to uh, to the uh, corrupting forces you know like um i mean if you're talking about the for example the, like for example hezbollah right they're pretty much self-sufficient and most of the organization are self-sufficient because they stole so much money from lebanon that they have accounts that they're not simply in lebanon we have piles of money inside uh, safe houses and, and abroad so no matter what happens to Lebanon, it won't really bother them. No one, no, not even a single party. Simple as that. If it's the top leader or the bottom leader, whatever, they're still going to be fine. They're going to get over it because their money is safe. So I'll Simply give you another that. example. So uh, they uh, invested, I think it was $30 billion over a 10 year period into the national electricity grid. And I don't think there was a single wire <laughs> they got yes, it. It. <laughs> nothing i think how much how much uh power are you getting uh, these days uh marcel six hours uh actually you know what you have to uh depends where you're living if you're in beirut you get around 18 hours of government electricity and you have to cover up like six with the generator when you go further from Beirut, from the center the, the hours of the public electricity or the government electricity decreases to 12 even to six, even to four hours in the remote areas. So the rest of the day you have to supply and uh, by generator or, or some other cartel that's taking over and putting high prices to provide you with electricity at least till like 11 p.m. at night and then just shut down, there's no electricity. You wake up in the morning to at 6 a.m. you have electricity back. Yeah, all that for $30 billion well spent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and the, the, the corruption, we could go back to the corruption. It's pretty much easy, or not easy, of course, not easy, but it can be solved. But the corrupted con the government, they don't want to solve because they take ad huge advantages of, of the prices and, and everything. So they just don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And people are tired of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, if you can see, I'm, I'm sharing my screen. Yeah. Uh, can you see yeah. it? What is that? Yeah. It's, it's basically, it's the accounts, how much the, co the customer distribution according to size of the, of, of the account. You can see that almost, 80% of the people have below $20,000 in Lebanon. Yeah. And there are the savings. And the majority is below $3,000. It's 61% of the accounts. We, we as, a, as, a, as a people, as a Lebanese, we don't really have a lot of savings and we don't really have a middle class in Lebanon. It's really being really somewhere sub poor, but I'm doing fine or really rich and posh that they just travel where everywhere and I have a BM and I have the latest phone and I just, there's a huge discrepancy between people. So let me ask you, I mean, I mean, we are, you know, I mean, we want to talk about, I want to talk with you guys about Bitcoin eventually, but um, <laughs> do you see the root cause? I mean, 
I mean, today I saw some kind, some kind of diagram, a chart where you literally see how much of you know the world's whatever GDP trades, uh, currency exchanges are pegged to the dollar, and because yeah, because the dollar is the international dominant reserve currency. Um, do you see? I mean, what do people do? Do uh, like in Argentina? I know in Argentina they have a, like a pretty you know solidified underground exchange market. Is there something like that too in Lebanon? Like where people are for Bitcoin? Yeah, or, yeah, like 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 back and forth dollar and uh, Bitcoin and, and we back. have a we have a small community of peer to peer P two P, but it still needs a lot of work. We are, I believe, we are very, very early to the game when it comes to Bitcoin in Lebanon. Um, there's a lot of work to be done, and people are still, people still believe that Lebanese uh, pound is backed by gold. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm serious. If I ask, I, I actually, I'm a sales person by, by, by you now. I'm working as a sales in sales, so I apply my skills to investigate people's knowledge on on uh, on monetary policies. Either some of them just don't know what money is, literally, like what is money? They say I don't know. But most people and don't. If I ask uh, them, most people uh, well, don't. Well, true. I mean, true. But the second question, if you follow, it, like, okay, what is it backed by? It's like gold. We have plenty of gold. Lebanon, it's like filled of gold. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> it's just it's not that. And you were asking if it's a, it's what's the problem? What's the main issue? Root problem of let's say in Lebanon. I think the root problem is that we are not back to productivity. If you understand what I mean, we have zero productivity in Lebanon. We we don't produce. We just take money from other people and spend it, and then promise them back. We'll give you back later on. Simply as that. Fiat thinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's Canadianism, <laughs> right? You gotta spend, man. You gotta spend. At its, ag at ag its, at its core. Yeah. But but so, now yeah. we have only twenty two billion dollars left in our reserves, and we're supposed to have minimum of eighteen billion, and we spend seventeen billion per year. Now the COVID just delayed it a little bit more because now everyone's at home, no one's being you know uh, going out and spending, and there's no in the economy really going. So it's kind of snooze for a few some time, but it's gonna just like rubber band, just gonna snap harder. You know, I've so always had this vision. I mean, either Lebanon, I'm sorry, to, uh, like Venezuela, Iran, or you know, some of these uh, hyperinflate potential hyperinflationary countries, to turn it to a Bitcoin standard. <laughs> Since Safid and Amuz lives yeah. in Lebanon, so I thought, you know, what what does it take? What does it take to to take this transition? Or what is the transition? What's the transition going to look like? So, 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 Venez places like Venezuela and Iran, at least, they've got some great natural resources to bootstrap them if they ever decide to jump on the correct ideology. So uh, an, an open, fair market and uh, criminal justice system in places like Venezuela and Iran, these will be two very, very, very wealthy countries in the future. Uh, and, I, and I wish them and, and their people that sort of luck and that's how their scenario uh, turns out for them. Uh, because yeah, once everything collapses, uh, something has to emerge from the collapse. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'd hope it's a, it's a fair and honest uh, 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 economic and judicial system and uh, a good economy generally grants people most rights anyway as a, as I always say the, the economy fixes uh, social justice mm -hmm. uh, Lebanon we might have uh, have hit the have hit the oil lotto so we found we've discovered some gas in the Mediterranean when? Sea where uh, Oh, it's been years. It's oh. years ago that they've still, the cartel's been trying to figure out how to split it up. Percentage. <laughs> luckily, luckily for the cartel, they don't know how to produce anything. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Total, the French uh, mm -hmm. ONG company said, we'll come in and we'll help you get it out. You just got to get rid of the government. Which is not going to happen and, because uh, they're still alive and kicking. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so any potential like future, uh, uh, you know, income stream from that, uh, we'll need to wait for the politicians to go. Uh, but eventually, a uh, dams break and politicians have to go. Yeah. So uh, let me let me just add something to to as a Lebanon. Lebanon is a really beautiful country. I mean, it, 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 your your heart aches seeing that such a potential, such a beautiful place, and people are amazing. Even in all the situation right now. 
I guarantee if you come, you feel safe. If you knock at anyone's home, even if they're hungry, they're hungry they don't have money, they'll share with you whatever they can. There's, it is, there is a division, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. It's, it's really nice. The diversity of, of the people, it's, it's amazing. It's really worth coming and experiencing Lebanon. The, the division is mainly at a uh, political level. Yeah. Down at like the local population, as you saw, like you go out and have fun, you do a coffin dance for the lira, like very, <laughs> very happy go. Like, like funniest, uh, like funniest people, funniest place, but uh, time, uh, time to stand up for themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and and a, a few behavioral changes as well. The the not liking to produce. Uh, uh, well, you is, would be incentivized uh, for getting fifteen percent. I mean, everyone, yeah. oh, most of the people just. I like it. Come on. We, we invest in stocks to get some kind of retirement money, let's say for the future, five, eight percent. But if someone's giving you 15, you should be asking questions, of course, but it's, it's very attractive. That, that's how I was. But if I go back four years ago, my aim was like, okay, I need to get some money. Let me get like a few hundred thousand, whatever, and just put it in the bank. And then I'll be just fine. I'll, you know, I'll be really happy. But no, that's not the reality. You have to no, that's, that don't that's even cover the inflation rate. It doesn't man. work. No. Yeah, yeah. It ha it hey, ha hey, yeah, hey. That has to be paid. <laughs> I, believe it or not, believe it or not, uh, some people have been comparing to our government or uh, the governor of, of Central Bank to Bernie uh, Madoff. You know, which, you know, he well, actually... He's, he's, been, yeah. he's been around long enough. How long has Salem been governor for? 30 years? I think 1993. I it's not purely, of course, his fault. It's all the government that's been corrupted. But he's like a shell person, a front facing of it all. But there's $120 billion missing from our uh, bank, basically. So we just beat Bernie Madoff. Oh. Yeah, poor, poor Bernie. Because uh, re really pretty much everyone else in Lebanese politics is there. Everyone's a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> all of them, every and single actually, one of them has a billion dollars or more. They all have private private jets. It's uh, we even, yeah, it's we even have <laughs> uh, we even have a we have a coined uh, word for our own dollars because the Lebanese dollars inside Lebanon they are not real dollars. I mean, I have my accounting. I can have fifty thousand dollars in my account, my bank, but they don't really exist. Exist. It, they, they called it the dollar. The Lebanese dollar was coined, I think, by Dan Azzi. <laughs> yeah. Because this, this money doesn't exist. I mean, there's no coverage for that. There's no cash. There's no hard money behind it. I mean, dollar. Do you know what that? It. Do you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of like the 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 Mount Gox uh, Gox coin, where yeah. uh, where people were selling the right to their Mount Gox Bitcoin for like 0. 0.3 of a Bitcoin, or something like that. Uh, yeah, very similar. Like now the the the, the U.S. dollar, like a, a Mount Gox Lebanon. Uh, dollar Version. would be would be uh, sixty cents. What has okay. the lira been repinned? I've heard they repinned it to like thirty two hundred. Oh, uh, we have three or four official exchanges now, which yeah. is the interbank one, the exchange house one, the money transfer one, which is from Western Union and MoneyGram, those kind of services. Yeah, and market, right? the exchange rate, yeah. And you can exchange your dollars, which are the Lebanese dollars at the bank, at another rate. So effectively, I think we have four different rates, and it keeps changing. It's very dynamic. So what's uh, what's the best one? What's the worst one at the moment? I think the most fair one is the exchange house one, which is the okay, three thousand yeah. nine hundred Lebanese pounds per Oof. per dollar, currently, yeah, which makes yeah. which effectively makes us losing around sixty seven or sixty two percent of our purchasing power. It's is pretty much and the funny thing is they actually call it the black market they try to to push this agenda that the exchange houses is a black market well the way we see it it's an open market of course there might be some manipulation we don't exclude that but obviously if there's a demand and there's no supply the price has to go up right it's simple as that it doesn't it's get the, simpler. it's the it's the real market it's it, yeah simple as that doesn't get simple. So how about things like uh, like prices? So uh, so let's take for example a very common Lebanese breakfast. Kavan is uh, is a, a pastry we call the manushi. It's like a okay, it's, a, really, it's honestly, a time pizza. <laughs> so so this is the absolute cheapest thing. Generally, like if if we if we were just down on our luck and we needed a feed, 
there was this particular one place we'd go to near uni, a, a bit further out from uni, but like uh, they had them for Mitenu <laughs> Khamsin, tw- about yeah. what used to be 20 cents uh, 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 USD Back equivalent. Then. Uh, I'm, well, I know I, I know the standard went up quite a bit, but how much is it these days? Well, before the the, the whole situation, I think it was like one thousand five hundred to two thousand liras, which is almost dollar or dollar ten cents. But yeah. now it's doubling; it's doubled the price. Uh, I mean, you can't you don't see it really um, when it comes to to dough or or wheat based products because. The Lebanese government is still supporting that at the old rate, which is the 1,500. But the products like uh, diary products or uh, the basic products you buy for home, everything tripled, every single thing. Like at two in a kind, which was like 1,500, is now five to 6,000 lira, which is same in dollar, let's say, value, but the Lebanese value is just lost. People are going crazy because they really don't understand that it's not the dollar that's going up. Is basically your value of lira is the ones going down. Mm-hmm. The prices are still the same. Nothing changed. Okay. Are there are there still active uh, daily protests? I imagine so. Uh, the past one week we had an increase in in, in in the protest because people are really tired. But it went really uh, aggressive because people are throwing multiple cocktails at the banks. Now, we believe that it could be manipulated by some political parties just to cause more riots and more anger uh, because most of the protesters like me and others that used to go to, to protest, we are peaceful. We are very peaceful. Mm-hmm. We don't want any, any, any fights. We want to go down and just protest and change the regi- regime, nothing else. And Marcel, no I, read, I read an article that they had, they had they just had to you know, uh, withdraw or what do you call it, loosen up the, the lockdown, the restrictions because you know there were merchants and people doing business so they had to just let it go they you know otherwise they would have been fighting with masses of people on the streets because it's existential threat you know so mm-hmm. do you know anything about that like but like easing, uh, recently we're the... losing yeah yeah the restrictions used to be like um, for example sundays now we are freely to move and, and and to go shopping and do some grocery shoppings uh for past 60 days we were not able to do that mm-hmm. So they are losing up uh, those restrictions. Like restaurants are opening now to limited customers and limited of time. There's some kind of restriction just to, you know, let people have a breathe, breathe, let them out a little bit, you know, relax because the ch- tension and the rest is growing like big time. And look, if- uh, in terms of like mental health and all of that, the psyche of Lebanon, we're not a people that stays home. No, we're not home. We're like uh, home people at all. We love to go out and party all the time, beach party, and just let Mon- me out Monday all the time. To, Monday to Sunday. So, for example, in in '06 during the '06 war, Beirut was getting bombed. Never mind. Take the clubs and clubbing up to the mountains, and you go party in the mountains. Oh. So, like, so it's the Lebanese resilience that even when the sky is falling, it's like doesn't matter. It's gonna be all right. Let's go. You're always with a smile. Fun. Love the attitude. Okay. So, uh, and, so, and yeah, you can I see hope this that... attitude everywhere. And that's the cool part and beautiful about Lebanon. That's why I'm saying if you want to come to Lebanon, just you know, come over. It's really, really nice place to be. People are amazing. Even despite everything is happening, just uh, it's a great place I love, to be. I love the Lebanese food. I mean, I had it a oh. couple of times in London and Vienna is also a couple of restaurants, really good Lebanese restaurants. So, you know, Edgware Road is no, uh, is no Beirut city, my friend. You'll, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll uh, maybe ne- maybe next year before Honey Badger it'll be summertime. Uh, be cool. If uh, yeah. if Lebanon's open back up, we'll do a Lebanon trip. Yes. <laughs> so uh, Marcel, where do people Bitcoin. buy Bitcoin? How how do they? I mean, Bitcoin. yeah. I mean, what, what's the situation over there? How- now, you have to you have to understand that before even the, um, the situation that was happening in, in Lebanon, uh, we were not able to use our let's say bank accounts to purchase any. Bitcoin, because as per laws, uh, Lebanese law, you are allowed to hold it, trade it with people, but you're not supposed to use it as a purchasing vehicle. You cannot buy anything with it. I accept it as a, as a payment in Lebanon. Mm-hmm. Therefore, banks are not allowed to process any uh, payment that ha- is related to uh, Bitcoin. You can't use any exchange. Uh, no, ex- every exchange will block your card. Most of them, unless there's some kind of new exchange that will bypass those laws. But overall, you can't. You can't do that. So most of the trading was happening peer to peer, 
or either local groups for Telegram, WhatsApp, or uh, local bitcoins.com or other other for example, mostly. What about the premium? Because right now, I mean, is that true that, that the premium people are paying for for a bit? It, is there a premium like in the black market or uh, general? Um, uh, in, in no, uh, the way I see it, we still have around uh, zero to four to five percent commission. That's the, the the standard premium right now. But the ones we see online is that is because the Google or let's say any exchange rate online, it still shows you the official rate, which is the one five zero seven point five Lebanese lira per per dollar. So if you convert that for the when they request the new price in Lebanese pound, okay which is the inflated price, it shows you all the sudden fifteen or $20,000 per, per Bitcoin, which actually is 8,000 or 9,000 right now in the market. So it's the, the value of Lira that's lost, but the dollar is still there. Are there a lot of hodlers in Lebanon? Do you think people are hodling or, or just, uh, is it just for, I don't know, transition, you know, to go back and forth? The way I see the, the groups I am in, maybe we are maybe total 400 to 500 per people mm -hmm. officially in the group. I assume there could be another maybe 500 to 1,000 just on the side, just voted from themselves in Lebanon. I'm not talking about people who are living outside. So the community is very small, very, very small. So we are trying our best to raise awareness, but it's very difficult to do that because people still don't understand money. And that's what's been my mission actually. To, to teach people about the money before I teach them about Bitcoin. Because if yeah. someone comes to me, come, like there's a magical internet money, and they'll be like, what? Well, it's a scam, you know. But if you, if you try to probe them and ask them what is money and try to explain it to them and give them a little bit of history, you know, eventually they're going to ask a question, what's there? What can I do? Once they do that, once they ask that question, you can start introducing Bitcoin. Do yeah, people I think around the, you, the, sorry, yeah, go ahead. The, the Lebanese are, are latent Bitcoiners as well. Like mm -hmm. if an episode like this doesn't teach you about money, like, I'm sorry, you will never, ever, ever learn about money. <laughs> like if you've been actively, you know, on the journey of hyperinflation and, you know, someone walks you through it, uh, you'll be very receptive. Whereas somebody that lives, you know, somewhere, you know, stable, like Australia, like the hyperinflation just doesn't occur to them. They're like there is no yeah. way like this sounds like a conspiracy theory like there is no way this can happen i'm like no it happens all the time <laughs> yeah but you know Hassan, the, the thing is about uh, bitcoin uh, i kind of call it a, 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 pr a privilege to have a bitcoin because for example i live Belize people before the situation even back then it was very difficult for you to acquire bitcoin even if you wanted to and to store your value or to believe in, in a speculative asset that uh, to put in Bitcoin, you just couldn't get it. It was very hard to buy it. Just it wasn't there for you to ease to, to get it. So, it's true. And as a solution to Lebanon, I don't think it is. But however, like you said, there's a 14 uh, million people uh, Lebanese living abroad. If each one of them, or like few of them, just send hundred or fifty dollars uh, to the Bitcoin wallet of their families, and, and or just set it up at home, you just set it up, just give them the seed. You don't need to do anything, and let them using between each other. Like you don't really have to buy things from from a uh, supplier, but between each other for simple services, this could pick up. So the solution comes from outside, from people who are living outside. Of course, the yeah, Lebanese uh, people can start work, sorry, work and start earning Bitcoin. That's another way. But exactly. since we have so many people outside, just fifty dollars. Yeah. That's all it takes. And and look, the outside crew is getting bigger. So another, uh, uh, you know, yeah. uh, another characteristic of Lebanon is the brain drain. Mm -hmm. So of the hundred plus friends, you know, I made in Lebanon, I probably have like six friends left in Lebanon. Nobody lives in Lebanon. Like you finish uni and you, you get out, you go anywhere, anywhere but Lebanon. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yes, cool. of these people joining you soon. A <laughs> couple of the loyal stragglers, you know, stick around in Lebanon, but, but everyone leaves. So when I go back in like summer and like catch up with the people that have been living overseas, uh, uh, a lot of them are into, unfortunately, crypto. Uh, if they because oh, really? uh, because uh, 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 they love their shit coins in like Dubai and like the Emirates. <laughs> oh man! Mm. But they've uh, they've all heard about it. They've got access, you know, to exchanges, you know, uh, locally. Uh, but yeah, these uh, these people come to Lebanon to prop Lebanon up. 
-hmm. go spend some money on summer holiday, have fun, mm -hmm. get it all out of the system. Because uh, it's because it is the best place in the world to do it, and then go back to the drudgery of you know the desert or you know somewhere in Europe or America or Australia in my case. Uh, yeah. So uh, we do we do try send. Uh, you're 100 Marcel. It's it's got to come from from the West. Like uh, m going back to like my Bitcoin as a charity uh, analogy. Uh, with uh, with all big uh, with big charities or or, or movements, uh, the Tesla Model Three could not have existed if rich people didn't fork out for the Tesla Model S. Mm -hmm. Right. So Bitcoin <clears throat> isn't going to succeed for the poor until the rich people start forking out. And as like, I said, uh, it's a privilege now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bitcoin is a privilege at, at this moment of Bitcoin's life. It's a privilege to have it, to understand it, to be able to buy it, and to deal with it or hodl it. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, yeah, that's heavy. I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you think about it, think about it. Let's say, not, not like go out of Lebanon. Let's say my my salary is a fifty dollars salary, and I have to buy. Uh, I want to buy Bitcoin on local Bitcoins .com or hodl hodl. It's, and I have to pay around ten to fifteen dollars premium. That's the first one, and then I have to send the money to Western Union or or MoneyGram. That both things will eat around twenty to thirty percent of my fifty dollars. I am left with thirty dollars. Right. And then, yeah. and that's yeah, my no, monthly it, salary. Like I, yeah, I can't. I agree. It's just unimaginable. It's the it's the circular economy. So first is you get yeah. your auto DCA army mm -hmm. to get the price up yeah. nice and high and stable. And then once it's stable, you send the money into the third world, and they can just loop it around each other in a stable ecosystem. So that's the right. that's the that's the goal. That's the that's, that's goal, the yeah. that's the end game. Now, if we could just get yeah. a couple more million auto DCA people on board, and uh, just, just we're not get far one away. million Lebanese outside, let them just yeah. send fifty dollars, just fifty dollars to your family, those young ones, so those who are like. 18 to 25, just send it. 50, nothing's gonna happen. It's gonna hurt your 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 you know monthly salary, whatever. Just send it. Let them try it. Let them train between each other. You can start using Lightning Network if you find too slow. Fine, whatever. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I uh, I'm I think that sounds like a fantastic idea. Not just yeah. for Lebanon, for pretty much every other country in, every the, single in the world. Person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the rich, we're gonna have to put our nuts on the table. To keep the price I mean, stable, the rich, uh, to to, see, to to make it useful for the for because look, if you send fifty bucks, and there's not rich people consistently buying and holding the floor of this fifty bucks, yeah. the fifty bucks is going to be worth twenty bucks. It's not helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, the thing is, the rich they try to get richer by putting those premium prices. I, I really yeah. challenge anyone listening to this podcast to create or brainstorm yourself into creating a, a place where someone can buy a small amount amount of, of Bitcoin for like $20, $30 for relatively cheap uh, or no premiums whatsoever, taking in consideration that this person sending you money will have charges on the way when he sends you the money. So, you know what, don't make any profit, just give away this Bitcoin without any profit or any loss for you if you don't want. Just help others. Mm. And that's not much. Yeah, that's going to be a, a, a what's it called? A bull run uh, uh, goal <laughs> for me after. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you see that the, the 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 problem I see is that the whole the whole economy is more or less you know pegged to the U.S. dollar. So I mean, you talk about circular economy. So I was thinking, could it be possible? You know that a that a mass, a critical mass of, you know, business people, small businesses, merchants, shop owners start like, you know, trading with, uh, I mean, I know the lightning inf payment infrastructure kind of go a long way till it's you know, more user friendly and more scalable and blah, blah, but, you know, like, like internally circular economies, but then when it comes to like, uh, to the outside, you know, like, uh, trading, importing, exporting, whatever. Yeah. you got to use the dollar, I guess. But mm -hmm. could that be like a viable strategy? Well, Bitcoin against dollar would be quite liquid. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, if, you, if you've got Bitcoin in your mix, it's good. But for the circ, but basically the only thing keeping a circular economy forming is price stability. Like uh, the price is just too low 
and too volatile. Uh, but yeah, it looks like the auto DCA movement, like, like is picking up this volume uh, statistics and uh, yeah, hopefully give it another year or so you'll have like uh, the, the DCA army absorbing the entire mine supply. <laughs> Actually, there is something interesting I, I, I noticed in Lebanon at this moment when it comes to the Bitcoin community. Uh, we kind of, if you want to buy uh, or let's say sell Bitcoin, you won't find buyers because there's no dollar in, in, in the market. We, ha we are having shortages of dollar. Right. So even for the Bitcoin community, it's hard now to exchange uh, Bitcoin because uh, there's no dollars, simply as that. Yeah, so, so no paper uh, dollar. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of difficult even for trading, and I've been noticing some premiums even going down to negative, like minus one of the big amounts. Like just give me dollars. Yeah, cash, uh, cash is king, isn't it? Everybody loves old, uh, old is. uncle, Uncle Sam, uh, Mister uh, Benjamin. It still is. So how are they gonna get still around is. their their paper dollar shortage? Is, is someone gonna deliver them a few pallets? Well, yeah, well, that's what we do. We, we Lebanese government is hoping for, and oh, they're doing some plans, too. presenting it internationally, and let someone throw, throw some dollars and let's hope someone catches the hook and gives us some money. So we're now literally beggars now, at Lebanon, and uh, I think we have enough of money or dollars to to buy six months or one year of supplies if we keep going the old habits. Otherwise, we really have to devalue the Lebanese lira. I think that this is just the beginning. I could be wrong. I'm not an economist. That's my disclaimer. I'm just a person who fell in love and with Bitcoin and this biological entity. I, 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 you know, call it. It's alive. And the way I see it, this is just the beginning uh, for Lebanon. It has something has to change drastically for 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 it to be better. I think the I think Lebanon's hand will be forced. I think uh, I think hunger will make drastic action inevitable. Yeah, that's what I see. Yeah, the pain point hasn't been. Yes. Yeah, well, this is the, this is the, the, this is the very interesting part. You see, uh, I asked my friends from from uh, from younger age school in Lebanon, and they were complaining actually, like, you know, we have everything so expensive. We really don't have any much more money to buy anything. And I asked them, who did you vote for, like, two years ago? There's like for this political party, and. This is the party they're blaming the whole situation for. Did you vote for them again? They said yes. That's stupid. <laughs> no. To maximum. Okay. That's stupid. To maximum. What? I don't know why people go voting what? at all in the first place. Seriously. Just, why do people go voting? I don't. You know, you vote with your money. With you, you vote by, by, by adopting Bitcoin. That's that's how you can transform the world. You know, this is so fucking brainwashed. I I can't believe people are still going to the voting booths. You know, uh, I always compare it, I compare it to actually, sadly, to an abusive relationship. You just, you don't believe you can live without it. Mm -hmm. You need someone to encourage you and to either deprogram you or brainwash you into something good. I know it sounds bad to brainwash someone again, but just the right way or deprogram you. Mm -hmm. You're going to be fine. Just leave her, him, whatever, a person, you know, and it's going to be fine. Just, you can be by yourself. You can, you can do it. We can do it. All of us. Everywhere in the yeah. world. I just uh, wish these people didn't have to hit rock bottom to, to, to learn. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. I've got a I've got a I've got a bull run goal now. A post a post bull. If there's a if there's another bull to try to to get a, a pro bono effort of uh, circulating sats into the third world. There's an old there's an old uh, cartoon. I saw about Lebanon written in the written in the newspaper when I was a little kid. So it's this dad and his uh, and his son standing around, and the son asks his dad, "Dad, uh, why do they call Lebanon a third world country?" And the dad says, "Son, that's because there's no such thing as fourth world." <laughs> <laughs> that's so hilarious. <laughs> So, uh, so you if, never know. If, we can uh, make one. <laughs> yeah. So if I can succeed in getting Satoshi's into into Lebanon, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, uh, we'll we'll see. It, it's I mean, it, uh, it, it's not going to be easy. 
another way to to uh, get Satoshi to to uh, give incentive to people that work online, like for example, now we have uh, the COVID situation. A lot of people are staying at home, and uh, a lot of young people are programmers in Lebanon who who are seeking jobs. So why not to give the opportunity? Of course, they have to take the initiative and and search for them. But you can give as a Bitcoiner, you can give opportunity to someone that lives in a third world country like let's say uh, Africa or the Middle East. Give priority to those people. I mean, I know there are all places that, that they, they have skillful probably programmers, but if you want, pay them with Bitcoin. I think yeah. even just telling them that let me pay by, you by Bitcoin, if they don't know it, they will understand it, they will look into it, and the eyes will open up and they'll just yeah. look into it. Even a small this percentage of point, people who get... Who, yeah, this is one point yeah. that Andreas Antonopoulos always, you know, repeats. Oh, you, yeah, you got to earn it, you got to earn it. I mean, he's not, you know, I'm not sure about Andreas Antonopoulos by now. He's a sort of a, a diversified... The guy, so, so <laughs> not sure sometimes uh, his statements, but do I understand them correctly or not? But uh, yeah, I think we gotta just make it. I mean, let me let me ask you some practical question. So my my priority because I live in Austria, and my girlfriend, you know, she has her own company. She 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 has her own business. She works literally every day. And I, I said, you know, and she would she would love to implement, uh, you know, a, a payment in, in, infrastructure. You know, like a, a Bitcoin infrastructure, but she, I mean, she doesn't have the time, you know, to 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 go, you know, read uh, a lot bunch of books or whatever, or or listen to podcasts or videos or whatever. So, I think we gotta we gotta really s simplify the whole process. And I thought, you know, if we form like a special task force and go to the small businesses, the merchants, the you know, small shop owners, and tell them, hey, you know what, for the it's coming, you know, I mean, they already feel it. They see the economy is breaking down and, you know, inflation is coming. People are looking for a solution. Right. You know, their old friends now calling me like yesterday. It's like, hey, you know, whatever my stocks, whatever, they're going to be uh, crashing and blah, blah. The inflation is coming. And it's weird. You know, people who have never heard uh, or have never contacted for years, they, they all of a sudden they're calling me. So. I thought, you know, if we start with the merchants and the businesses, small businesses, we can help them transition. At least they have a viable, you know, alternative payment solution. Um, you know, we already have the tools, don't we? Yeah, I, I believe it, it, it comes back to the human capital, to us. It's not about shilling the Bitcoin, about Moon or, or uh, how to get rich quick. It's basically how to provide a solution that existing problem. But people don't see the problem till it's there. It's too late, like Lebanon, for example. Yeah. So you have to start introducing the whole monetary system gradually to someone. Ask the right questions in the, in, in, in the right way. You know? Don't give them the teachers. Give them the benefit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, like you, you, you do have to teach the, the money. I always start my lesson with, have you ever wondered how money was made? And like, that's the hook mm -hmm. that I get yeah. the, the new reason. They're like, yeah, uh, no, I never wondered how's money made. And then, yeah, then they very, very quickly learn about the fractional reserve banking system. And two minutes later, they're, they're ready to buy Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> if they don't believe it, people are actually surprised because they don't understand that the most important thing is, is you, you're the value, you're the human capital, it's your time. That's, that's the Bitcoin spect or the gold spect. The fiat money has no backing whatsoever. It's actually stealing your time, your life, your energy. So people, once they understand that, they go like, okay, let me protect my, val my value, my own value, my own time. How? How can I do it? And that's where it begins. Exactly. So let's wrap this up. So what's your um, final advice or any suggestions or people, where can they find you, Marcel? On Twitter? Well, they can find me on Twitter. I already uh, shared my handle uh, for your tweet. So if anyone wants to contact me, uh, go ahead. And uh, that's my official challenge. Try to find a way how to provide a cheap Bitcoin, not a cheap Bitcoin, but a small amount of Bitcoin to uh, the third world countries to help us help everyone. Because it starts from you, not from us. We can't access Bitcoin. Awesome. Has. All right. All right. Yeah. So, uh, closing statements: uh, Hire Lebanese, buy Lebanese, and uh, come through. Visit Lebanon. You can go skiing and go down to the beach same day. The oh, sky it's the, amazing. The sky, the skies are clear because uh, you know, Corona's shut down all industry, 
and uh, and I'm sure that the Mediterranean is is sparkling clean as well. Awesome. Ready, so you ready, can ski ready and for swim tourists. at the same time, right? Same, same day. <laughs> so uh, half an hour round about, apart. <laughs> round about this time, round about this time of year, maybe a bit earlier, maybe early April. You could uh, you could uh, ski and beach same day. Mm -hmm. No worries. Yeah. Awesome. Great place to be. It's been really a pleasure. Hope we can repeat this. And oh yeah, yeah I had sure. a great time. Me too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. You too. Bye. Bye, Marcel. Bye, bye. Bye, Hess. See ya. See ya. All right, that was a really fun talk. Um, cause I've always been curious, like what the situation in Lebanon looks like is, you know, things always repeat in a pattern, uh, historically, monetary wise, economically, with its inflation or hyperinflation bail in and, you know, and, uh, the whole currency crisis and, uh, economies now crashing down, you know, especially because of the, uh, artificially created, I mean, I call it artificially created, whatever COVID-19 lockdown situation and people, you know, are losing their jobs, their, their businesses, their, their livelihoods. It's really, I mean, uh, it's unbelievable that a small, you know, handful of people can dictate the lives, the existence, uh, uh, of eight, uh, nearly 8 billion people around this world you know, at least billions of people. Anyway, thanks so much. And uh, thanks so much for listening, for support and give me a like. We sh we sh uh, if you loved it as much as I did, please like it, retweet it, share it. Um, make sure you follow Marcel and Hess on Twitter. I'm going to put those in the show notes. And um, let me know any questions. My email address is hello at the totalconnector.com. And if you're a Bitcoin sponsor, get in touch with me. Uh, I'd love to do more, you know, especially live, uh, hopefully soon, you know, more personal like face to face interviews and high audio and video qualities, and also do some more documentary, uh, videos and movies. So yeah, thanks so much. My name is Kevin Devani. I'm the total connector host of the total Bitcoin podcast show, and I'll see you soon around. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.